After being put on ice by the talent agency, I purchased a male incubus from the black market. With white hair and golden eyes, a heart-shaped spike on the tail swinging slightly in mid-air, and a pink tattoo on his belly, he was quite a sight. I had him call me master, and took pleasure in bullying him ruthlessly. However, during an audition, he cornered me in the makeup room, revealing himself as a renowned maverick director. His eyes were teasing yet full of an invasive sense of control. I'm sorry, it seems like now you have to call me, master. Because of this incident, during the afternoon recording, Hugh was even more annoyed at me. But I didn't care. I even boldly shared my puppy with the netizens in front of the camera. Sisters, I don't want to eat alone, let me show you something good. With that, I put the picture Aiden sent me, with the face blurred out, in front of the camera, the barrage on the screen was hooting. Oh my god. Those eight-pack abs. Willow, you're my sister. Just thinking about my sister getting such a good puppy, my teeth are about to crush. Hey. You too. Show me close up. I feel uncomfortable being envious, I'll sign out first, sisters. At this time, Howard, who somehow managed to sneak up behind me, asked quietly, may I have a look? What is he, a big man, looking at? I wondered, but still put my phone in front of him. The next second, the gentlemanly man said something unexpected, he seems quite flirty. Can you send me the picture? I was shocked and instinctively protected my phone with my chest and blurted out, brother, calm down. He's not gay. Howard was silent, do I look gay? I laughed awkwardly, ah ha ha, I didn't mean that ha ha ha. Fortunately, he didn't make things difficult for me and left with a smile. I continued to share Pet's daily life with the netizens, inadvertently attracting numerous followers. Whitney couldn't stand it anymore and hurriedly asked Hugh about Blake to gain attention. The director tactfully switched off my camera shot. As a result, there was a lot of dissatisfaction in the live stream. Over the day's filming, Whitney was almost coddled in Hugh's palm. Howard didn't comment all the time. It was not until he was about to leave in the evening that Hugh approached him and said, Uncle, can you talk to my cousin and let me star in his new movie, seeing that I'm taking such good care of his girlfriend? Howard didn't say a word. Hugh thought he wouldn't agree, so he quickly brought over Whitney, sister-in-law, say something. After a whole day of interaction, Whitney was absolutely familiar with the role of sister-in-law. She confidently clutched Howard's sleeve, charmingly acting like a younger relative, uncle, please help him this happened to be the prime time in the evening, and the number of people in the live broadcast room reached a record high. So, everyone saw the gentle Howard, who had been gentle all day long, suddenly turned cold. He pulled his clothes out of Whitney's hand and scoffed, who are you? Did I acknowledge you as Blake's girlfriend? Everyone both inside and outside the live broadcast was stunned. Hugh was even more blown away. What do you mean by that, uncle? Ethan, who had been poker-faced all along and not much of a presence, chuckled, giving everyone a punchline, it means that Blake's girlfriend is someone else, and this Whitney is trying to gain popularity. Hugh was shocked on the spot, utterly guards down. Two seconds later, he finally responded. Does it, does it mean that all the sucking up I've been doing all this time was actually for nothing? No, Whitney, who are you? If you're not my cousin's girlfriend, why did you tweet that? I'm done. I thought you were my future sister-in-law, and I turned down other activities to participate in this variety show. Speechless. Hugh, who had risen to fame due to his quick talking, didn't feel wronged at all. He even turned around to pack his luggage directly. Wasting my time, not filming anymore. Uncle, wait for me, I'll go home with you. Director, contact my company for the penalty for breach of contract. This sudden development stupefied everyone. The director urgently shut down the live broadcast. But the recorded video had already gone viral. The keyword Whitney slapped in the face was trending shockingly. Internet users who loved watching gossip were utterly confused. So, Whitney is not Blake's girlfriend? Then why didn't Howard say so in the beginning? Uh, I suspect Howard did it on purpose. After all, the higher one stands, the harder they fall, oh my, the tactics of the wealthy are ruthless. Not outright banning, but rather killing with overhype, wow, imagining from Howard's perspective, I can't think how satisfying it must be, okay okay, now the question is, who is Blake's girlfriend? I, who had experience being shamed on the spot, also began to be curious about this issue. So as soon as I got home, I was eager to discuss and analyze this issue with Aiden. But when I pushed the door open, the room was quiet. 
Aiden wasn't here. There was a note on the coffee table. It read, I'm handling something, wait for me to come back. Aiden. What's going on? The dog I bought for over six million has run away from home? I threw the note into the trash can, sat on the sofa and huffed for a while, then quietly took that note out, put it in a frame, and placed it by my bedside. Considering how well he had served me before. Reluctantly. I'll wait for him for a few days I suppose. Unexpectedly, I ended up waiting for over half a month. It was like being in a long-distance relationship as I spoke to Aiden on my phone every day. He seemed particularly busy, his responses came slower. During this period, I realized how little I knew about him. Every time I asked him for information, he'd use his allure to divert my attention. But luckily, I was busy too. Perhaps due to the blunder in the variety show, the company returned the resources originally given to Whitney back to me, and they even replaced my manager with a top-tier one, providing me with a more professional team than before. I was dumbfounded. My previous manager, Rose, secretly pulled me aside in the break room and asked me, why didn't you say earlier that you have connections with the Vandermeer family? I pointed at myself incredulously. Huh? Me? How could I possibly have connections with the Vandermeer family? However, Rose put on a you're still lying to me expression. If you don't know the Vandermeers, why would they send a lawyer to back you up? Confused, I wondered if it was Howard. After all, he was the only one from the Vandermeer family that I had interacted with. With that thought, I found Howard's contact that I had added during the last variety show recording. Mr. Howard, thank you. I'd like to invite you for a meal when you have time. The reply came quickly. It's not me. As for who it is, you'll know in a couple of days. Who else could it be then? Hugh? Impossible. That guy was infatuated with his future sister-in-law in a creepy way. And I didn't know Blake. I was utterly puzzled. A few days later, news about Blake auditioning for the female lead for his new drama spread. Along with others from the company, I also went for the audition. Surprisingly, Whitney also showed up. She had switched to another company recently, and her resources had taken a severe hit. She was no longer as arrogant as before. Deliberately sitting next to me, she gritted her teeth and said quietly, I've fallen to this level. Are you happy now? Isn't this your own doing? Instead of chasing popularity, you should polish your acting skills, I replied. Ignoring her resentful gaze, I got up and followed my assistant into the audition room. After entering the room, I introduced myself while sizing up the five judges in the room, particularly the man in the center wearing a mask and a baseball cap, pulled low with Blake. He leaned back slightly, raised his chin, and looked at me through the gap in his cap. His gaze was cold. I stumbled over my words. Because his eyes looked a lot like Aiden's. Was it because I missed him so much? I looked down, avoiding his gaze, and steadied my emotions to perform. I couldn't think of him at this moment. I had to climb up. I had to get this role. Men can't get in my way. At the end of the audition scene, the other four judges unanimously turned to Blake in the middle. Director Blake, what do you think? His voice was low and his tone was flat, let's move to the second round. His words made me breathe a deep sigh of relief. Thank you, directors. I said excitedly and went outside to wait for the second round. During the wait, I couldn't resist finding a restroom. The scene for the second round of auditions was the heroine, a goody two-shoes, discovering that her crush is a serial killer. Her emotional transition from shock, to panic, to plunging into madness for love was tested here. I could not afford a single hiccup. By the time I finished performing, my back was drenched in sweat. Despite this, I looked expectantly towards the man seated in the middle. He did not participate in the discussions with the other judges, rather, he was just staring blankly at the resume that I had handed over. That made me even more nervous. My hands that hung in front of me clung tightly to my clothes. Not until the female director sitting next to Blake smiled and looked towards me and said, we hope for a pleasant cooperation, did I finally relax. At this moment, I was very grateful to my past self for studying and acting diligently. After I got the role, I relieved myself and went to the restroom. However, on the way past the makeup room, a man with bare knuckles pulled me in. Ah uh ah. -uh. My terrified scream took a sharp turn in my throat. Director Blake? 
He didn't answer, but his eyes were not as cold as they were during the audition. You, what's the matter? As I spoke, I tried carefully to get rid of his hand. To my surprise, he became even more aggressive, forcibly intertwining our fingers. What are you doing? You. Have you missed me? Aiden? Hearing the familiar voice, I felt stupefied. But he just laughed even more happily. In astonishment, I covered my mouth, and then cautiously began to remove his baseball cap and mask. No white hair, no golden eyes, no sharp teeth. I recognized him immediately. It was Aiden. You. How did you become? I was already too astonished to speak. He, however, hooked my chin and kissed me directly, in a rush. I turned my head to dodge, feeling inexplicably wronged. As a dog you disappeared for so long and suddenly reappeared as a genius director, don't you think you need to explain it to me? Blake, however, countered by forcefully holding my chin and forcing my head back, lightly laughing, what do you mean dog? Looking at the situation. It seems that you should be calling me master. His gaze was playful, yet aggressive. I, on the other hand, didn't hold back and slapped his face, took control by holding his chin, and raised an eyebrow. The master doesn't like those words, don't say them again. He touched his reddened cheek with his tongue, not angry, but helpless, at least let me feel what it's like to be a master. I pushed him back onto the single sofa, stepped on his thigh with my foot. The heel of my high-heeled shoe pressed slightly. His Blake winced from pain, but his hand reached for my ankle. His black hair turned into the familiar white, and his black eyes also turned golden. He looked up at me, his eyes wild, pushing so hard, aren't you tired? Damn it. That sentence made me laugh uncontrollably. The grievance dissipated instantly. I withdrew my foot and comfortably sat in his arms. Now tell me the truth. Blake kissed my forehead before saying, I was an adopted child in the family. After turning 18, I mysteriously started to transform into this state, and my body feels uncomfortable, so I don't like to go out. Then how did you end up in the black market? He smirked, I did it on purpose. How else would I get close to you in this form? I was afraid you wouldn't accept me, so I took a different route to get to know you. I was speechless. So, you asked me for more than six million? Give me my money back. Blake ruffled my hair, his smile indulgent, all right, all right, I'll give it back. I'll give you all the money, six billion, you can spend it as you please. How much? Six billion? I'm done with you rich people. I stared wide-eyed. But the next second, I decisively made myself cozy in his arms, knowing when to take a step back. Please note, it's a voluntary gift master Blake laughed, and his chest vibrates slightly, you sure change fast. Obviously. That's six billion. I would have to start working from the time of the Big Bang to accumulate that much. So, did you know me a long time ago? I don't remember ever seeing you. Your acting professor in college is my aunt. I watched your performance when I sat in for a visit. You were very spirited. So, was it love at first sight? You could say it was lust at first sight. He was very honest. Just like me. I also felt lust at first sight with him. If he had worn more at the black market, maybe I wouldn't have bought him. With this thought, my hand expertly slipped into his waistband, grabbing a hot piece, I missed this, let me touch it. He didn't stop me, but instead asked, so, can I kiss you now? Although he's clearly a succubus, he asked with such innocence. Even cuter. I directly pulled his collar and kissed him. Kissing him until everything else seemed to blur. I became the leading actress in Blake's new film. We would pretend to have a normal friendship while filming, and then kiss passionately in places where no one else could see. Sometimes while we were reading the script together, I would deliberately rub my leg against him watching as his face filled with helplessness. I think we both are quite quirky. Even though we are already together, we particularly enjoyed this subtle thrill. That is until a paparazzo photographed us kissing in the car. His face. Our love. Was exposed. Netizens were shocked. Willow is with Blake? When did this happen? I think they were together before that dinner show. Howard was telling Hugh he didn't look after his cousin's wife properly, but Whitney isn't the one, only Willow left. All right, all right. So, Willow is director Blake's master? OMG, can't believe it. Now that I think about it, I have also seen director Blake's abs. 
After the exposure, a large number of fans flooded into my Twitter. I took a photo with Blake, who had returned to normal, as a response. He commented below, please order me as you wish, master. This made the fans scream. Howard heard the news and teased him, you really are such a flirt. Hugh silently added me on the messaging app Cousin's Wife. You're my real cousin's wife. I admit my mistake, could you talk to my cousin, give me a role to play please? I laughed until I died. This kid. What are you laughing at? Blake walked out of the bathroom, drying his hair. I showed him the messaging app message Hugh had sent. He also laughed. He sure is flexible. But I won't give him a role that easily, let him dream on. You should take advantage of him, to vent your frustrations. All right, all right. Blake really holds a grudge. I was about to reply to Hugh with a smirk, but my phone was snatched away by Blake. He obediently knelt down in front of me, resting his chin on my knee. Master, don't play with your phone. Play. Looking at the pink tattoo on his abdomen, I instantly understood what he left unsaid. All right, all right, 